Hi everyone, welcome to this new Geography and CRT lecture series. And in this series, we have started discussion on fundamentals of physical geography that is class plus one NCRT. And this video is all about the third chapter, which talks about the interior of Earth. The Earth's surface on which we live is largely a product of many processes that is operating from within the crest or from within the interior of the earth. So we have endogenic as well as exogenic processes which are constantly responsible for the present day physiography of the earth. And endogenic factors means the factors that is acting from within the earth's interior while exogenic factors are the factors which is affecting the uh, earth's crest from the surface or these are the external factors so external factors will help us uh, help the earth's surface or the external factors will modify the landforms on the earth's surface while endogenic factors are responsible for the formation of the landforms on the earth's surface and since we are living on the surface of the earth our life is very much influenced by the physiography of a region and it is necessary for us to understand many activities that is taking place on the surface. For example, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, etc. So in order to understand the reason behind the tsunami or volcanic eruption or such devastating uh, activities, we should understand how the earth's interior is structured or what is there within the earth on which we live so for that we have gathered informations from many direct sources as well as indirect sources so now we will read about the direct sources and most readily available solid earth material is the surface rocks which we get from mining areas and we have gold mines in South Africa which is as deep as 3 to 4 kilometers. Generally, mines are up to a depth of 3 to 4 kilometers. And we have some other projects like deep ocean drilling projects and integrated ocean drilling projects etc. And uh, we have the deepest drill which is located at Kola in Arctic Ocean. And in this Kola drill, we have reached up to a depth of 12 kilometers. And the second most important direct source is through volcanic eruption. So when a volcano is erupted, molten material or magma will be thrown out onto the surface, which is available for laboratory analysis. And like this, we can study what the Earth's interior is made up of. Now we will read about the indirect sources. So by analyzing the properties of matter indirectly, it will provide us some information about the interior. And through mining processes, we, it was familiar for us that the temperature, pressure and density, all three factors are increasing with increasing depth. That means temperature, pressure and density of materials will increase as one moves from the surface towards the deeper depth of the earth's interior and another source of information is meteors so by studying meteors also we can understand the material with which the earth was formed since meteors are solid bodies which are developed out of similar materials to our planet by studying the meteors it will also tell us something about by which mat what material the earth's interior will be made of another indirect sources include gravitation magnetic field and seismic activity so the gravitational force is not same at different latitudes that is greater near poles and less at equator as you know the earth's shape is somewhat like this it is not a perfect sphere therefore the distance from poles towards the center distance from poles towards the center is smaller than the distance from equator towards the center 
and because of this the gravitational force will be greater near the poles and it will be less at the equator and the gravity value will also differ according to the mass of material and this variation in the gravity is what we call as gravity anomaly this variation in gravity is what we call as gravity anomaly this is the term and this gravity anomalies will also give us information about the distribution of mass of materials in the earth's crust and by studying the magnetic field or magnetic surveys will also provide us some information about the distribution of magnetic materials in the crustal portion and thus it will provide us information about the distribution of materials along the crustal regions and another factor is the seismic activity which is one of the most important sources to understand about the interior of earth and this to study the uh, seismic waves we will uh, look on to earthquake in detail so by studying the waves that are generated during an earthquake we can understand several characteristics of materials that are distributed along the interior of earth and the earthquake in simple words it means shaking of earth which is a natural event caused due to the release of energy from the interior part so when an, when some energy is released it will generate waves which we call as seismic waves and this seismic waves will travel in all direction let me make it more clear the earth's surface is not a single crust or the earth's crust is not a single part it has got several fragments or you can say several plates on it we have major plates like pacific plate north american plate south american plate eurasian plate african plate and indo australian plates etc and some other minor plates as well we have philippine plate then coco plate nazca caribbean scotia and many other minor plates as well so between these plates there are plate boundaries which are moving towards each other which we call as convergent plate boundary and we have divergent plate boundaries where the plates are moving apart each other and we have transform boundaries where these plates will slide apart like this the plates on the surface or on the crest are moving each other moving apart each other some are moving towards each other some are moving away from each other and some are sliding apart and the area between or the sharp break along the boundary of two plate is what we call as fault and it is from this fault the release of energy occurs and the rocks rocks that means the crystal rocks this crust and also this part these both plates they are having a tendency to move in the opposite direction so they are moving in an opposite direction and the one which is lying above this one this plate is lying above the other plate and when these two are trying to move in an opposite direction there is a friction which is taking place between them so this friction is holding them together but at some point of time these two these plate are uh, successful or at some point of time this will be able to overcome the friction that is holding them together and as a result this block will get deformed 
so this block will get deformed like this and eventually they will slide past one another and when they move each other this will cause release of high amount of energy and this energy will be released in the form of energy waves or what we call what we can call as seismic waves and this waves will travel in all directions and the point from which the energy is released so this is the point from which the energy is released and this point is known as focus so the point at which this energy is released is known as the focus and from this point which is just perpendicularly above the focus on the surface of crest is known as the epicenter and this focus can al uh, also be called as hypocenter and the point which is directly above the focus or hypocenter above the uh, point on the surface is known as the epicenter and the earthquake waves are of two types one is surface waves and the other one is body waves and when this uh, waves are generated it is recorded on a device called seismograph and this body waves it is uh, generated due to the release of energy at the focus and it will move in all direction throughout the body of earth and that is why it is called body waves and this body waves will interact with the surface rocks and it will generate a new set of waves which we call as surface waves so we have two types of waves one is body waves and the surface waves and these waves will surface waves will move along the surface and the velocity will change as the waves will move from one medium of matter or when it moves from uh, materials of different densities so that means when this waves when it moves from a high uh, highly denser material to a rarer material the velocity will change and their direction will also change as they will reflect or refract when coming across the materials with different densities similar to the uh, effect of light so light when travels from one medium to other it will bend towards or away from the normal this we have studied in smaller classes and in the same way this waves will also get reflected or refracted when they are coming across the materials with different densities and this is a picture which shows earthquake waves and this this is how the waves are shown in a seismograph so we can see here p waves s waves and surface waves so p waves means primary waves and s waves means secondary waves we will read about them in the next paragraph and we have as we as i have told you we have two types of body waves one is p wave and s wave so the p waves have some properties which are different to the properties of s waves first property is that the p waves will move faster and they are the first to arrive at the surface and that is why they are called primary waves and the secondary waves or s waves will arrive at the surface with some time lag so <clears throat> p waves have some similarity towards the sound waves they will travel through gaseous liquid and solid material remember the p waves are similar to sound waves they can travel through all uh, stages or all kind of materials like gaseous materials liquid materials and solid materials but but the s waves 
which will arrive at the surface with some time lag or it will arrive uh, next to p waves and they are called secondary waves and the important factor about the s wave is that they can travel only through solids they will not travel through gaseous or liquid materials and this is very important and which helped us to understand the structure of interior of earth and the another thing which is given here is that reflection will cause waves to rebound whereas refraction will make waves move in different direction and the variations in direction of waves are inferred with the help of their record on seismograph and the surface waves are the last to report on the seismograph and the surface waves its peculiarity is that the surface waves are very much destructive and they are the uh, culprit behind the building collapse or displacement of rocks and other calamities that is occurring along the surface of earth next is propagation of earthquake waves we have different types of earthquake waves and all uh, waves all kind of waves will move or they will travel in different manners and the p waves when you talk about the p waves it the, it will vibrate parallel to the direction of the wave as you can see here as you can see here in this picture the p waves will be moving or it will vibrate in the same direction as the uh, particles are moving but in case of uh, s waves the particles will be vibrating perpendicular so this is how the s waves are moving so the particles will be moving perpendicular to the propagation or the direction of the wave hope it is clear other than p waves all other waves like s wave l wave etc all other waves will vibrate perpendicular to the direction of their propagation so as you can see here in case of p waves the vibration will be same as the direction of waves and in case of uh, s waves the vibration will be perpendicular to the direction of wave and also in case of uh, this low waves and uh, rayleigh waves and in this case also the vibration is perpendicular so as you can see here this is how the low wave and the rayleigh waves move or they are vibrating the next topic is emergence of shadow zone so when the earthquake waves are recorded on a seismograph it is found that there are some points at which uh, no waves are reported that means we call that region as a shadow zone so we will uh, understand this with the help of a picture as you can see here this is the epicenter and from this epicenter we are measuring or we are uh, trying to record the seismic waves and it is observed that from the epicenter until 105 degree on both sides both p waves and s waves can be recorded and beyond this beyond this 105 degree it is observed that there is no s wave can be recorded that means this much region is not having any records of s waves but beyond this 140 degree so beyond this 140 degree again this p waves can be observed but at this zone that is 105 to 140 degree this is a zone where no p waves can be recorded no p waves as well as no s waves can be recorded but beyond this 40 degree this p waves is again 
recorded but at this zone no s waves can be recorded so at this point it is said that beyond this 145 degree from this point to this point this much region is the s wave shadow zone while between this 105 to 140 degree on either side this region is known as the p wave shadow zone so this is because as we have told or we have discussed earlier the p waves can travel in any medium that means it can travel in both gaseous material as well as solid material as well as liquid materials so but the only problem is that this p wave will undergo reflection or refraction when it travels from one medium of material to the other and that is why when this p wave when it moves on reaching the outer core and the outer core is liquid that we know we will discuss the layers in detail and now just understand that the outer core is liquid while the inner core is solid so this we understood from uh, this uh, measurement or this by, by studying this shadow zone this is what we understood that is the p wave has a property it will travel through all medium but the thing is that it will refract or reflect when it moves from one medium to other so therefore when it travels like this on reaching the outer core which is liquid it will undergo a uh, undergo some deviation and again on reaching the solid inner core it will again undergo refraction and because of this there emerges a p wave shadow zone in between 105 to 140 degree and after that again this p waves can be observed at this point but in case of s waves what we can understand is that s waves will travel only through solid it will never move through liquid since there is a liquid outer core here the s waves cannot enter into the core and therefore between this 105 degree to 105 degree this region between this region it is observed that no s waves can be recorded next is different types of earthquakes so uh, the most common type of earthquake is the tectonic earthquake which is generated due to the sliding of rocks along a fault this is what we have discussed earlier and another type of earthquake is that which is confined to the areas of active volcanoes and this is something that occurs in the region where we have some active volcanoes and this is called as volcanic earthquake and another classification is the uh, collapse earthquake collapse earthquake means the earthquake which is taking place uh, on uh, areas of intense mining activities so due to mining if uh, along the underground roofs when a mine collapse it may cause some minor tremors which will ultimately lead to a uh, collapse earthquake and the fourth category is the explosion earthquake that occurs due to the explosion of a chemical or a nuclear device and the fifth category is reservoir induced earthquake that is in the areas of large reservoirs the, there may occur some earthquake and which we can call as the reservoir induced earthquake and on the left side of this page you can see the p wave and s wave shadow zone and in this page here it is written that the p wave shadow zone starts from 103 degree from the epicenter <coughs> sorry uh, but in many books it is written that the p wave shadow zone starts from 105 degree 
this is the most commonly observed data but i don't know whether the 103 or 105 is the exactly uh, which is the correct value but i have seen in many books the data written as 105 degree that means the p wave shadow zone starts from 105 degree uh, from the epicenter so uh, and this value is somewhat 140 degree okay so the uh, p wave shadow zone is observed between 105 and 140 degree so this is the most commonly observed value but i don't know whether uh, the 103 or 105 is the correct value anyway we are moving on to the next topic that is measuring the earthquake so we can measure the earthquake using two different scales one is to measure the magnitude while the other one is to measure the intensity so the magnitude can be measured using a richer scale while uh, intensity can be measured using a Mercalli scale so richer scale will uh, give us values from 0 to 10 and Mercalli scale will range the intensity from 1 to 12 so that is the difference and the Mercalli scale will tell us how intense is the earthquake that means it will take us into take into account the visible damages that is caused by the earthquake while the magnitude will uh, relate to the energy that is released that means how much energy will be released during this earthquake so that is what the richer scale measures so next topic is the effects of earthquake so here you can see around 12 impact of earthquakes like the ground shaking differential ground settlement land and mudslides soil liquefaction ground lurching and avalanches and all these six points are related with the damages that can be caused around the along the lithosphere lithosphere and the other one is floods from dams then fire structural collapse then uh, falling objects tsunami etc and all these are the damages that is causing to the uh, surface a tsunami will occur only if the epicenter of the tremor is below the oceanic waters that means when an earthquake or uh, when there is a release of energy from the bottom of the oceans tsunami will occur and tsunami waves will be generated by this tremor and uh, any tremor which is uh, taking place within the ocean ocean bottom will uh, result in tsunami and the actual earthquake uh, may last for only few seconds but its effect is very devastating as we all know and the devastating earthquakes will be having the measurement or on richer scale as a magnitude of greater than 5 and this earthquake can cause many devastating impact or it can cause heavy damage to life and property and in uh, not all the parts of the globe will experience this major earthquakes but uh, at some points we can see that there are severe earthquakes that will occur and this is along the plate boundaries that uh, there occurs main uh, devastating or severe intensity earthquakes will be taking place and in this page you can see several images that has been given here in order to you can uh, from this pictures you can understand how devastating an earthquake will be and the next topic which we are going to talk about is the structure of earth so this is the interior layers of earth which we can see here and the crust extends from 0 to 35 kilometers and the lithosphere extends from 35 to 100 kilometers and below that we have the asthenosphere which extends from 100 to 700 kilometers and just below the asthenosphere is the mantle which extends from 700 to 
2890 kilometers and below that we have the outer core which is liquid and it extends from 2890 to 5100 kilometers and just below that we have the inner core which extends from 5100 to 6378 kilometers and this inner core is solid while the outer core is liquid and we have solid mantle here we have an another layer which is a asthenosphere which is mostly a semi-solid or you can say it is of a plastic layer and above that we have the solid lithosphere so this is the cross section of the interior of earth as you can see here the crest which is rigid can be uh, is extended from 5 to 70 kilometers thick that means the oceanic crest will have a thickness of about 5 kilometer whereas in continent the mean thickness is about 30 kilometers but in areas like uh, himalayas uh, the thickness of the crest will extend beyond 30 degree it may extend up to beyond 30 kilometers and it may extend up to 70 kilometers and the lithosphere is what we call as the region of the crest and along with the uppermost solid mantle so the uppermost part of the mantle along with the crest is known as the lithosphere and it extends up to around 0 to 200 kilometers depth and there is a discontinuity layer which is uh, separating the crust and the mantle upper mantle which is known as the mohrovic discontinuity and below that we have the asthenosphere asthenosphere which is the uppermost portion of the mantle and the term astheno means weak okay and it extends up to uh, 400 kilometers and it is said that the main source of volcano that is coming out during a volcanic eruption is from this point okay it is from this asthenosphere and then next is the upper this is the upper mantle and this is the inner mantle and the inner mantle is also solid upper mantle is a semi-solid which is partially melted and we have the inter in inner mantle which is solid and which is around uh, 2850 kilometers of thickness and below that we have the Gutenberg's discontinuity which separates the mantle from the outer core and the outer core is liquid which composed of mainly iron and nickel and this region we have the nickel and iron and the outer core is in liquid state while the inner core is in solid state and it is sometimes referred to as knife n i f e because of uh, the presence of nickel and iron and uh, the layer that is separating the outer mantle and the inner mantle here we have the the layer at this point we have the repetitious discontinuity r e p p e t t i s repetitious discontinuity and another layer of discontinuity is between the inner core and the outer core and this layer is known as Lehman's discontinuity discontinuity and this is overall a structure of the interior of earth and as I have told you the inner core or the core composed of predominantly iron and liquid uh, iron and nickel at this point the temperature is almost 5000 degrees celsius which is very high and also the pressure is very high at this point 
so next topic which we are going to read is volcanoes and volcanic landforms a volcano is basically it is a place where the gases ashes or other molten rock materials or what we call as lava is escaping onto the ground and on the basis of their frequency of eruption we can classify them into active dormant and extinct active means which has erupted in the recent past or which is frequently erupting and dormant when means the volcanoes which are not erupted in the near past but it may erupt in the future that is what dormant volcano is uh, there is an example which i can tell you is the barren island and the other one as uh, or the other classification sorry barren island is it yes dormant volcano and the other classification is extinct volcano so as of now it is not erupted but it may erupt in the future so such type of volcano is known as extinct volcano and the uh, other way of classification of volcano is based on the uh, nature of eruption or how is it erupted the first type of volcano under this category is the shield volcano shield volcano uh, are basically formed when the uh, lava is basaltic in nature so basaltic lava will create shield volcanoes so the nature of basaltic lava is that it is a uh, highly fluid it has got very high temperature and it is poor in silica content and therefore because of its high fluidity it will flow uh, at a speed of around 10 to 30 miles per hour that means it will spread out as thin sheets over great distance and it will get solidified after traveling a great distance so this will result in the formation of a uh, shield volcano or a dome volcano which is flattened with a wider diameter hope it is clear and the next classification is so before that they have given an example hawaiian volcano is an best example for shield volcano next is composite volcanoes and these composite volcanoes are characterized by the eruption of uh, cooler and more viscous lavas than basalt that means the basaltic lava is basic in nature while here we have the acidic lava which is coming out and the acidic lava is more viscous it is having high silica content and it is having low temperature since it is ha having very low sorry very high viscosity it means uh, the it is more thicker and therefore it will flow very slowly and uh, it will get solidified rapidly and therefore along the vent along the vent if this is a volcano along the vent it may create obstruction and this obstruction will result in violent explosion and uh, these composite volcanoes will have explosive eruptions and it is because the materials that is coming out through the vent will get accumulated along the vicinity which will lead to the formation of uh or which will lead to the violent eruption and the next one is caldera caldera is the most explosive of the earth's volcanoes and they are usually uh, very explosive that means they will collapse on themselves rather than building any tall structures and the collapsed depression after the volcano is erupted the collapsed de de uh, depression that is formed is known as the caldera or uh, you, you in some uh, areas or in some cases these calderas are later transformed as lakes which we call as caldera lakes so next is the flat basalt provinces and these again is formed by the outpouring of highly fluid basaltic lava uh, and this basaltic lava will flow over a long distance which will create in the 
uh, formation of thick basaltic layers over a over thousands of square kilometers with which will attain a thickness of about 50 meters and later it will be f converted as a flat basaltic provinces and uh, the best example is the Deccan traps which will uh, presently cover most part of the Maharashtra plateau and the next is mid oceanic ridge volcanoes and these mid oceanic ridge volcanoes will occur in the oceanic uh, bottom where there is a uh, mid oceanic ridge and along that ridge ridge means what it is the uh, place where the plate uh, boundary uh, is a meeting and so it is along the ocean bottom uh, we have the mid oceanic ridges uh, and along that region also we will experience we can uh, their experiences volcanic eruptions and which we call as the mid oceanic ridge volcano next is volcanic landforms so the lava uh, that is erupted during a volcanic eruption uh, will be developed as uh, igneous rocks when it is cooled and this cooling of uh, lava may take place either within the crust or after reaching the surface so when it is reaching the surface and it is cooled uh, it will be getting solidified and we call them as volcanic rocks while the lava when it is uh, cooled or it is solidified within the crust it is called as plutonic rocks that means the lava is cooled within the crust so this plutonic uh, rocks will form the intrusive landforms so here you have a picture that is given which will uh, which will tell you what are the uh, landforms or intrusive landforms that was developed within the crust as you can see here this is the batholith or this is the bottom layer where huge mass of igneous rock is available usually this igneous rock is usually composed of uh, granite and it is uh, from here that the uh, magma is coming up and the vertical intrusions which is caused by the lava within the crust is known as dike while horizontal intrusions are known as sill and this dome shaped intrusions are known as lacolith while saucer shaped intrusions there are some so intrusions which is formed in the shape of a saucer which is known as lapolith it is known as lapolith lapolith while the other one we have some uh, something which is formed as cyclines and anti cyclines something like this so in between something like cyclines and anti cyclines it is known as facolith p h a c o l i t h s this is something uh, known as facolith so cyclines and anti cyclines is known as facolith saucer shaped is known as lapolith dome shaped is known as lacolith while vertical intrusions are known as dike and horizontal intrusions are known as sill so now we have come to the end of this chapter and make sure you are going through the questions given at the end of this chapter and please go through these questions and that's all about this chapter interior of earth thank you and we will see in the next chapter bye bye